October 5th, 2020. Just wanted to get a close up of all the buckwheat and rye that germinated. Rye, 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 buckwheat. And I know there's Austrian winter pea in here too. Let's see if I can find some of those without stepping on too much in here. Uh, I believe that's a winter pea popping right there. Um, and of course, worm castings. Absolutely everywhere, the worms are all through this. So, uh, good soil building. I think we're going to have a good winter of cover cropping, which is really encouraging because that should really help improve the soil for next year. And uh, that should make for better productivity, less nutrient input, on down the list of benefits. Alright, just a quick clip. October 5th, 2020. Probably 70 degrees out today. Mostly sunny most of the day. A little bit of cloud cover coming in now. Uh, excellent honeybee weather. Still have a decent amount of goldenrod open. I know I saw them working that down in the lower block. Traffic in and out of the hives is uh, pretty impressive. So that's nice to see. Getting ready to uh, pull the top box off of uh, the right hand hive here, the swarm hive, that box. And also pull this box off of the left hand hive. And uh, I think I mentioned in other videos that there will be some honey, probably four or five frames in this top box in the swarm hive, but again, uh, that's not really worth getting the extractor out for. And also I may need that in the spring when I start catching swarms and uh, doing splits and all that. I really prefer to give them their own natural honey resources. It just makes sense to, uh, to give them the best resources available. Uh, I probably am after I pull those boxes and get uh, entrance restrictors on and screens to keep mice and all that kind of garbage out. Once I do that, I probably will uh, come back and feed these guys some uh, some syrup, some sugar syrup at the end of the season, just to help them backfill the empty spaces in that nest. Now that the uh, brood is basically hatched out, there'll be a bunch of empty room in there. We might as well let them fill that with some carbohydrates. Uh, to help them get through the winter. Uh, we want to ensure good success over the winter and uh, end up with healthy strong colonies in the spring so we can actually pull off a honey harvest next year. So uh, that's that. And I guess we'll go take a look at the top bar hive see what their activity is like. But these two are rocking. Awesome traffic. So here we are at the top bar hive. Pretty decent traffic. Of course, there always has to be a helicopter flying over. Anyway. See a good amount of pollen coming in. If there's pollen, I'm sure they're pulling nectar as well. So that's good. Hopefully this colony will survive the winter okay and break out in the spring uh, with the same robustness that they've had this season. And uh, 
blow out a bunch of swarms for me and we can get some new colonies going and uh, expand the apiary a bit. Of course it all comes down to uh, how they do over the winter and how well they uh, take off in the spring. Anyway, I just thought I would do a quick update given we're uh, very close to the end of the flying season and honey season. Kind of uh, like to keep an eye on them and see when the activity stops. Alright, that's it for now. Honeybees are in the aster. Heavy. as are the bumblebees. Here we are in the greenhouse. I'm gonna harvest another Meyer lemon. Look at the size of that thing. It's almost like a baseball. Beautiful, beautiful. Deep yellow. Awesome. Just on my way out. Flock of turkeys out in the field here. Of course they're freaking out because I stopped and got out. Look at those big beautiful birds. Oh, sorry for the horrible camera work. I'm at full zoom. Mm mm mm. Tasty. October 5th, 2020, back in the old greenhouse, doing some greenhouse work. Harvested another round of holy basil for seed. Bunch up there drying, bunch here, bunch here. More to bring in. Uh, everything is doing pretty good in here. Fig trees continue to crank. Supporting good ecology. We get uh, a grasshopper and a daddy long legs hanging out there right off the bat. Apparently they like sitting under the warm lights like the kitties used to. I guess who wouldn't? Uh, anyway, uh, things are doing well in here. Uh, rosemary is fantastic. Everything's growing. Keeping up with watering. Uh, let's see. Main thing I wanted to show here was uh, my mom just gave me a hibiscus today. And uh, Astra said, wasn't that the... Uh, wasn't that the thing your friend gave me some uh, flowers from for tea? And I ended up really liking it. It was hibiscus. Uh, I went back and looked it up today after I got this home. And, uh, yeah, so this is a, I think this is a tropical hibiscus, not a uh, hardy hibiscus. There's two different main uh, varieties. And this is a tropical one. Uh, but it's perennial and it flowers. Uh, it is not frost hardy. But, of course, that doesn't matter here in the greenhouse. So... Um, and uh, it is getting ready to throw off a flower, um, or, or a few, actually. Uh, my mom had done some pruning on it, uh, I guess for spatial reasons. Um, but I just wanted to share it. Uh, this is a new addition to the greenhouse. I usually don't like to take what I consider to be ornamental plants, but I did some reading up on hibiscus, and uh, maybe I'll throw a link down in this video underneath in the description. Because uh, hibiscus has a lot of excellent properties as far as uh, 
heart health and uh, uh, cholesterol uh, regulation and a bunch of stuff like that. Um, so uh, I'm glad that I took it and uh, you know as I like to say all plants are medicinal. Um, it's just a question of finding what their medicinal capabilities are and using them. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to share this because uh, it's, a, it's a new addition. Uh, what else? Uh, so the ginger is doing pretty well. Uh, actually finally back to watering those more regular so they're uh, perking up a bit. I still haven't been in here to feed everything. I probably should get to that this week. Um, there's another uh, block of ginger here. Uh, I gotta get some more soil and fill these in a little bit more soil wise. Um, I harvested another round of the uh, sweet Thai basil and uh, I stripped last night I stripped all the uh, previous ones off the stalk down to a pile of uh, sort of uh, sweet Thai basil rubble <laughs> and I gotta sort the seeds out of those and uh, I remember I had a screen around so I got that out and I brought it out uh, and I'm hoping that the basil seeds will fall through that and all the uh, well most of the chaff will stay on top but we'll see. Uh, I have a couple of other different screen sizes around, but those aren't mounted on a frame, and this is on a frame, so I thought I would start with trying this first. I think those basil seeds will probably go through that. They're pretty small. Um, what else? Sunflowers are drying. Uh, I know it's relatively quiet in here right now, but that's just because I have the fans off to shoot video with. Um, this one up here, I... Uh, I'm really excited about um, and there's some others here too that are also very large uh, I finally got the uh, I filled the thermal mass pot up uh, with pond water for now because it's all I have for water source for the greenhouse but uh, that's full and pretty warm so that's helping to heat these and dry things out a little quicker uh, keeping nice temperatures overnight uh, the other bigger plot of ginger back in the back there is doing well I guess maybe I should uh, I haven't really done a greenhouse tour in a while, so maybe I'll give you a close-up of those roots. All right, so these have been in this bin, I think, three years now? Might be four. It's been quite a while, enough that I don't remember how long. <laughs> anyway, uh, I haven't uh, taken these out of here. I've harvested out of here once or twice, but uh, for the most part, I just propagated back in here. That was early on. In the last couple of years, I haven't harvested out of here. I've just let this grow and propagate because I want a huge amount of ginger so I can propagate out more and actually start growing it for uh, for production. Uh, right now the ginger that I have grown in here is basically to have live growing ginger for uh, propagation basically. Um, although there are times like uh, recently I injured myself, I injured my sternum and uh, a couple years back I had uh, fallen and broken a rib and uh, for pain and inflammation, ginger and turmeric are all I use. I don't take ibuprofen or any of those NSAIDs. I stay away from those. And uh, actually the ginger and turmeric were really effective for that. Uh, I was a little apprehensive at first about whether that would actually work, but very effective. So I like uh, having my own plant medicine right here and available in the greenhouse and accessible whenever I need it. Uh, you know, I don't have to get in a car or uh, make sure there's gas or get through, uh, you know, potential uh, disasters on a roadway or whatever in order to, to care for my own health. I can uh, pull my medicine right here. This guy here is a coffee tree that I've sadly neglected quite a bit. It's got some uh, white fly on it. And uh, I got to do some pruning. I think uh, now that it's finally leafed out a bit more on the bottom here, I'm going to prune this top off and kind of clean it up and take better care of it. I probably will put this into a different planter. This planter either seems to really dry out or retain a lot of water because it has one of those water reservoirs on the bottom. Um, so I'm probably just going to uh, move it to a different planter at some point. Uh, meanwhile the old catnip is carrying on next to it. Uh, anyway, uh, it's in rough shape but it's still growing so you know that's kind of cool. Uh, I would love someday to get this plant's health up to a point where I can actually harvest enough coffee beans to make a cup of coffee from it, but we'll see about all that. Alright, back to the subject at hand. Uh, 
So I'm um, just going through, this is the double standard sweet corn. This is the second year that I've grown this. First year I got seed from Johnny Selected Seeds. And then last year I saved seed on this rack. Uh, and you can see some mice managed to get in this rack on me over the summer, which just uh, is all I can say. Um, anyway, from there, uh, I basically took a, another uh, screen tray and put it upside down on this with a center block on it to keep the mice out for now. I think the spot that they're getting in is coming in through the floor, so I gotta pull all this stuff out and uh, cut a couple of boards that'll fit tight in the bottom of that. And then hopefully we'll have mouse proof for this because that's the whole darn idea, uh, you know, in addition to good airflow for drying. Anyway, uh, back to the sweet corn. Uh, so this is uh, sweet corn I harvested this year, uh, dried for seed for next year. Um, this does not perform anywhere near as well as uh, the hybrids like Bodacious or Incredible. Those are certainly my two favorites thus far. Um, but it is an heirloom sweet corn and it's consistent in production whether it's uh, you know super productive or not. And uh, I really like heirloom seeds for a lot of things. I would love to take this and another high quality sweet corn heirloom and cross it and make my own hybrids. but. I'm not that far along in corn breeding and genetics on corn just yet. Uh, either way, this is uh, I've selected the bigger ears out of here with the bigger seeds on them. That'll be my selection for this year. And the rest of those I'll probably just feed off to the chickens or something. Um, because uh, you, you, know, you can see they're fairly short and uh, fairly small diameter ears. That's not what we want to propagate. We are going to select the bigger ears that are longer with bigger kernels on them because that's where I'm trying to go with this variety. And uh, I'm going to continue to try to improve this variety both through nutrition and care and also by continuing to slough down for the better seed, the better seed. And eventually what I should and probably will start doing is actually grading the seed off of these by seed size and we'll pick only the biggest seeds that are the most viable. Um, but there's different levels of gradation you can do. And certainly, I'm sure we can get into that when, uh, when Brad from Grow the Farm Up comes on, Comrades in Farms. Uh, I'm, I want to ask him all sorts of stuff about corn breeding because I know he's intimately familiar with it since that's what he does. Um, so maybe we can uh, get some awesome information from him. Either way, I just wanted to share this and uh, we'll move on to the next. All right. Up here on rack three, this is all the purple cornflower heads that I saved uh, probably a month ago now. Uh, there is a bunch of seed in here. Uh, some of it may or may not be viable. I have to go through and finish uh, stripping these seeds off of these heads still. It's kind of a pain in the butt to do. Um, so I'll be doing that over the winter when there's more time. But a uh, decent amount of seed collection and I'll definitely uh, you know, stratify and germinate these in the late spring. and. Uh, whatever propagates will be planted out somewhere for uh, to further propagation and to supply pollen and nectar for pollinators and again have local plant medicine available. All right.